Hi there, this is Sean Hansen, and I want to welcome you to this week's Sketchy Saturday. I'm going analog this week, and I'm doing something kind of terrifying. I'm busting out a new sketchbook, but not just any sketchbook. No, this is a big one, as in the pages are 9 inches by 12 inches, which is a lot bigger than the 8.5 by 11 inch by 5.5 inch sketchbooks I've worked in for the past several years. When I started doodling off and on a couple years ago, I chose small sketchbooks intentionally because it felt less intimidating staring at that small blank page. Recently, though, I began feeling kind of cramped trying to fit my doodles into that small space, so I decided it was time to go big or go home. Now, full disclosure, I am at home, so there's not a lot of risk associated with that proclamation, but it sure sounds risky, right? I'm going to start with a little planning, light lines to rough out the space and what I'll be doodling. Today's sketch subject is one of those things that if you're of a certain age, you'll have fond memories of one or more of these from your childhood. But if you're of a different certain age, sadly, you likely never had the pleasure of bonding with these magical givers of gifts. Dating back to the early 20th century, these amazing devices became commonplace in grocery stores, arcades, and malls after Thomas Adams patented the first one of its kind in 1907. Adams' model was made from metal and glass, which you might think had to do with what his machine held. That's not the case, however, as what his machine dispensed looked nothing like the bright, colorful standard most of us recall. In Adams' time, his machine featured simple, uncolored gumballs made from chicle, the coagulated milty latex of the sapodilla tree. I'm not sure how yummy that sounds, but hey, great things and humble beginnings, right?
as it happens, Thomas Adams didn't just stumble upon the idea of his patented gumball machine. He was a vending machine manufacturer and a chewing gum producer by trade who actually introduced the first vending machine to the United States in 1888. They were box-like devices located on the elevated subway platforms of New York City, and they sold Tutti Frutti gum. Adams' patented gumball dispensing machine was known as the Adams Gum Company Penny Gum Vendor. As its very long and not really catchy name suggests, it was designed to dispense a single gumball for a penny. And if you're wondering, in today's market, that penny gum would run right around 30 cents. Like a lot of really cool things, the gumball machine was a riff on the already established vending machine concept, and it led to gumballs becoming very popular. The gumball machine begged for color, both inside and out, which led the metal bodies of many gumball machines to be painted a fire engine red. Eventually, with the growing popularity of gumballs themselves, a host of manufacturers began experimenting with adding colors and flavors to gumballs. And by the mid 20th century, the more flavorful and multicolored gumball was the new standard. 
Once the new multicolored gumballs were introduced, the glass globe from Adam's original design made them pop, which is the reason that later versions of gumball machines made from plastic and other materials still feature lots of clear display space to allow the colorful gumballs to silently scream for attention. Aside from my childhood memories of tugging on the pant leg of whichever grown-up's care I was under while asking for a penny, nickel, dime, or quarter for a nearby gumball machine, I also recall seeing two gumball machines that were painted by artist Wayne Tebow. I'm just not sure his gumballs looked as delicious. Sadly, one thing I've never experienced is a haunted gumball machine, though urban legend contains its fair share of stories of people claiming to have encountered haunted gumball machines that dispense candy all on their own, along with other strange behavior. Personally, I look at a free gumball dispensing machine as a genie more than a ghost, but hey, that's just me.
If you happen to run across a working gumball machine these days, you can take comfort in the fact that most gumballs have a shelf life of 12 months, though there's no telling how often they're actually swapped out, so chew at your own risk. Of course, gumball machines don't always hold gumballs. At a certain point during my childhood, about half of the gumball machines at our nearby Rasco Tempo store switched to dispensing super balls when they became the craze. And lots of other gumball machines around the area did the same. Somewhere along the line of my childhood, braces ended my gumball machine days, and by the time I was out of those annoying and painful metallic menaces, I was of an age that sticks of chewing gum were more the rage.
Today, many of the gumball machines of old have become collector's items. It's hard to believe something that was once so commonplace in my childhood has become rare and that early versions of the gumball machine are considered vintage and antique. On the one hand, kids not shelling out a quarter for a questionably fresh gumball isn't a terrible thing. On the other hand, missing out on the joy of that pant leg pull resulting in getting the sought after coin and then plugging that coin into the gumball machine and twisting the knob while wishing for your favorite color to drop into the dispenser, that's a special kind of childhood magic that really can't be replicated in any other way. Save for maybe the sound of the music from the ice cream truck. But that's a story for another time.
Before too long, nearly every encounter people have with gumball machines will be as repurposed items. But there's a kind of cool to that. A lot of creative people have turned gumball machines into things like poetry dispensers, music boxes, coin banks, succulent garden containers, and even wedding favor dispensers. Perhaps my favorite new use of the gumball machine is that some artists have made them interactive art installations. Participants turn the knob and receive an item instead of gumballs. If I ever run across one of those, I'm going to put in my coin and turn the knob while hoping for a little ceramic gumball-shaped monster. I'm Sean Hansen, and that's it for this Sketchy Saturday. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to me if you give it a thumbs up, maybe even leave a comment if you're so inclined. And if you want to be sure not to miss my next Sketchy Saturday, be sure to click the subscribe button.